Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. When people started to traverse the oceans, they did so in ships like this, wooden sailing vessels. The old saying was, ships of wood, men of iron. Now, while indeed the vessels were made out of wood, they did contain an awful lot of ferrous metal. They had cannon, they had ammunition, even nails in the planks. This caused a problem for their navigation. Ships such as this used magnetic compasses, and this is an example of a magnetic compass. Now you notice that the, this compass has black metal objects on either side of it. These are magnetic compensators. This is actually tuned to the vessel to make that compass demonstrate magnetic north. And they're very sensitive. If you get those knocked out of kilter, your compass no longer points north. This became a much greater problem at the onset of the 20th century when ships went from being constructed primarily of wood to being constructed primarily of steel. A solution to this problem had to be found. And the answer, as it turns out, was in the procession of the gyroscope. Let's see how they did it. Well, guys, before we get started on talking about gyro compasses, I want to clear up something that seemed to have caused a little bit of confusion. Now, if you look up here, you'll see that force equals mass times acceleration. Now, in physics, that is described as kilograms times meters over second squared. Angular momentum is very similar, except it's kilograms times meters squared over seconds. Now, when you're dealing with a force, the big difference is going to be how long you apply that force. Whereas in angular momentum, it is the length of the vector of the angular momentum that's important. Now, folks seem to have some problems with this diagram right here, and that's probably because where I explained the formula, that accidentally was cut out of the first video. Let me see if I can do it again. Now, say this is your angular momentum. It's in this direction, and it's a magnitude that's this long. Now, if you apply a force to this and bend it over two inches, just the tip goes over two inches, you're going to bend that angular momentum like that. But if you have something that's got a lot more angular momentum, like this, and you bend it over the same two inches, you notice it doesn't bend quite as far. The angular momentum does not want to be bent over, and the more magnitude that angular momentum has, the more resistant it is to being bent over. And this is one of the keys of gyroscopic stability. Both of these can come from the same gyroscope. The difference between the two is that this shorter angular momentum is not spinning as fast as the longer one. The faster the spin of the gyroscope, the longer the magnitude and the vector of that angular momentum is, and the more resistant it is to being bent over. Hope that clears it up a little bit. The faster your gyroscope spins, the longer or the larger the magnitude of the angular momentum, and the more resistant it will be to being pushed over. That was what this, this entire diagram was trying to demonstrate. I hope I've demonstrated that a little bit better now. Okay, guys, in our first episode, we talked about gyroscopic precession in a mechanical gyroscope. Now, I told you that there was a force that required the gyroscope to tip over a little bit. So let's go ahead and go over that. Say we have a gyroscope sitting on the Earth and it's pointing straight up in line with gravity. It will continue to point in this direction at all times. So as the Earth rotates, it will continue to point in that direction. But as you can see, it's now at an angle to the ground. As the Earth rotates underneath it, the gyroscope tilts over. Gravity places a torque on the axis of rotation. By the right-hand rule, a force is generated to the left, and the gyroscope begins to process in a slow left circle. Okay, so let's go down to the equator, and let's look due east. Now, first thing in the morning, we see the sunrise. And what we do is we take our gyroscope and we lock it right on the sun. 
As the day progresses, the sun gets higher and higher. What our gyroscope will attempt to do is move upward with it. Because due to angular momentum, the gyroscope will not want to tilt over. It will want to continue to follow the sun. It will point in the same direction which was at the middle of the sun as the earth rotates underneath it. But what happens if we lock that gyroscope to the horizon? Okay, this is a little bit awkward for me because I've got the video reversed to make it easier for you, the viewer. Now, say I've got a gyroscope and this is the direction of the angular momentum. Now, as you see, this is pointing east on our rotating Earth. Now, if I point this at the rising sun, which comes up in the east, it will attempt to rotate through the day to follow the sun. So when it gets out here, it'll be noon, and then the sun will set in the west. What happens if I place a torque on this to hold that gyroscope on the horizon? So using our right-hand rule, I'm going to put the torque on it this way, and my thumb is pointing in the direction of the force. So what's going to end up happening is that the gyroscope will stay on the horizon, but it'll start swinging this way towards the north, because that is the direction of the force. Now let's see, probably the best way for you to be able to visualize this is to do it yourself. So I've got my three dots up here. This represents the rising sun looking east. If I take my pen in my left hand and I follow the sun as it goes up, it's going to move in this direction. If I take the fingertips of my right hand and place them on the end of my pen and force that pen back down to the horizon, I am putting a torque in this direction. That causes a force by the right hand rule to my left. And as I'm looking east, my left will be north. Now let's turn around and do it with the setting sun. As the sun sets, the pen will be on the horizon. And then as the earth rotates and the sun sets, it will attempt to follow the sun below the horizon. I take the fingers of my right hand, put the tip of that pen back pointing towards the horizon, and now the force is off to my right. Since I'm looking west, again, the force is to the north. So what we end up with, no matter what direction the gyro compass is pointing, whether it is at the east or the west, what will happen is the gyro compass will process from both directions until it gets to the north. And that is the principle behind a gyro compass. The only time that that will not occur is if, by some miracle, you manage to get the gyro compass aligned perfectly with the South Pole on the southern part of the north-south rotational axis. Any other position will cause that gyro compass to rotate until it points to the geographic north pole. Okay, so this is a Sperry Master Gyro Compass. This is located near the center of gravity of a ship to minimize rolling and the effects of the ocean. All it is is a gyroscope that is locked to the horizontal. As we have seen that once this thing spins up, it's locked to the horizontal and as a result by the right hand rule, it will cause that gyroscope to process to seek true geographic north. Now while we use the example of locking the gyroscope in on the rising sun in the morning, in reality, we don't need to lock this in on any particular celestial object. Gyroscopes, when they spin up, will have rigidity in space and the angular momentum will point 
at a location in space. It doesn't have to have an object or a star or anything else there. It'll just simply point to a certain direction. As the Earth rotates, the gyroscope will attempt to maintain that direction. If the gyroscope is locked onto the horizon, that will cause it, due to the rotation of the Earth, to process to the north, no matter what direction that it is pointing. Well, guys, there you have it. A mechanical gyro compass is absolute proof of the rotation of the Earth. If the Earth was not rotating, when you spun up the gyro compass and pointed it at the rising sun in the east, it would continue to point to the east all day long as the sun rotated around us. If, on the other hand, the sun was stationary and we were rotating, the gyro compass will track the sun. From any direction on the earth, if you aim a gyro compass at the horizon, it will process until it is pointing towards the geographic north. It will process the fastest if you are pointing it east and west, but it will process at any direction other than absolute due south. Technically, that could be a balance point. So when you start up a gyro compass on a ship, you align it probably with magnetic north to just kind of get it pointed in the right direction and then let, let it settle in on due north. So, thank you very much for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Take a moment, go down and hit like and subscribe in the corner there, and I'll see you again soon.